morning, Kinsey. Now, let's talk about um, Prince Harry. So there's this story, two stories. There was the story yesterday, uh, which I think was on the front page of the Sun newspaper, um, which claimed that Prince Harry snubbed the king. Um, he was obviously here in the UK the night before the anniversary of Queen Elizabeth II's passing. Um, he was then off to the Invictus Games and apparently he turned down King Charles who offered for him to spend the anniversary of the Queen's death in Balmoral. Um, is that true, do you think? And do you think, the cynical side of me wonders, was that actually put out by Harry's side? Because obviously there was criticism that he was here and, 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 and snubbed his family. Well, it's with it's by Matt Wilkinson, who I really do trust. I've communicated with him in the past and I have a lot of faith in him. But I, correct me if I'm wrong, weren't we kind of torn apart on the internet for suggesting that he was not invited to Balmoral? because there were originally reports that he was not invited to Balmoral. So this is a corrected version saying that, yeah, actually, as a matter of fact, he he was invited to Balmoral. It wasn't necessarily a formal invitation, but he had requested not only additional security for his trip to do the Well Child event, but he, stay, he, he requested to stay at Windsor or he requested to stay in one of um, in a in a venue that's owned by the royal family and he was denied because he did not give them enough time to organize such a thing and um uh, as an alternative he was told that he could come to balmoral to be with the king and queen and he opted not to but i remember at the time we reported that he was not invited and we were criticised for it, so perhaps somebody knew something that we didn't, Christo. Well, yeah, we were. We did say that he wasn't. Um, I mean, did we? We yeah, we did say he wasn't invited, and we actually said as well that we wouldn't have invited him ourselves because anything that he might say um, would end up probably just, in, in a book. I'm all about correcting us. If like we say something that's not wrong, I want to be like, hey, th that there, that was bad information. But at the time, it was being reported that he was not invited to Balmoral, and now Matt Wilkinson with the Sun is saying, yeah, he was. It wasn't necessarily a formal invitation. Uh, it was an alternative because he was asking for some things that the royal family couldn't give him at the time, which was um, a, a you know a royal household to stay in and additional security. Um, and, and he but, said his schedule. He said it was basically his schedule didn't mean yeah. that that he was able to. Um, but that, but that, but really, that like what a weak excuse. I really do believe in this case. It's because he knows Megan is persona non grata. Um, I think that this was an olive branch by the king that Harry should have taken with a vengeance. Well, but but I also wonder as well. Um, and perhaps I'm being unfair on Meghan, but I wonder whether, uh, or to use her full title if I was in her presence, which of course you would insist on, the Duchess of Sussex, um, which, you know, of course is the title of the family that she claims a terrible racist and doesn't want to be a part of, um, <laughs> would, uh, would, how would she feel about that? How would she feel about him spending time with the family without her there? No, I... I agree. I think that the reason that he said no was because I do think that he could have still had a, a moment where he remembered the Queen the way he did the next day at Windsor Castle. He could have had that with King Charles and Camilla at Balmoral, and we would have all respected it and appreciated it. Uh, this does feel like he, he did. He chose, opted not to do this because he knows that at the end of the day, his family is not in love with the, the his life partner that he chose. Well, I don't see why he couldn't have gone up there then if he was invited and kept that royal connection going. I wonder as well, being kind towards Harry and Meghan, I wonder whether there is a little bit, and I include us in this as well, and so, you know, I'm happy to call out our criticism, there is a danger he can't do right for doing wrong. 
um, you know, on the one hand, we do criticise him, don't we? And we say, look, you know, of course he's going to turn up at the coronation. Of course he's going to turn up at, uh, at, at, at various events because he needs that connection in order to monetize it. So we criticise him for doing that. And then when he doesn't go to Balmoral, we criticise him because he's been invited and snubbed. So I wonder whether, as well, we uh, there is a, a bit of a danger from people like us of, of the fact that he just, as I said, can't do right for doing wrong. What would you say to that? Well, I understand what you're saying, but I try to be fair. For instance, today someone wanted me to talk about a video of Megan at Kevin Costner's grabbing the mic. And clearly the attitude they wanted me to take was, look at how thirsty she is. Look at Hollywood rejecting her because the woman walks off with the mic. But I didn't want to say that because I don't know the circumstances. Somebody could have told Megan 30 seconds before that video, you're going to give a 45 minute speech. Make sure you grab the microphone. I'm not going to be critical when I don't know what the circumstances are. There's plenty to criticize these two about. I'm not going to be petty when it's unnecessary. And in this instance, it does sound like a real olive branch from the king. Come have this private moment with the, with the queen consort and I. This is our first, you know, this is the first anniversary we're having without your grandmother my mother and I think that that would have been PR wise a, a win for Harry I think it was a, re a real missed opportunity for him and I also think that of course they have put themselves in this position where they can't do right for doing wrong because uh, I understand those people that are cynical saying well look you only want to see them because you want to put it in your next documentary you know, you right. only want to see them because you want to put it in the uh, Archetypes podcast. Oh, dear. Hang on. The Archetypes podcast. What's happening with that? Uh, so, basically, the, the, the story is... I don't really think this is a story. I think Megan gave up on Archetypes truly when Spotify said they were no longer interested in it, but she's no longer fighting for the trademark, so they've just regurgitated the story that she's letting go of the podcast. And... I mean, it, it, it's it's interesting because a lot of people were saying, well, she didn't really do any work for it anyway. Any of the interview, she, she sat down for the celebrity interviews, but any of the actual interviews around any of it, she didn't do herself anyway. Well, it wasn't what she promised us when she when they said that they were create, cultivating this relationship with Spotify. They said these were going to be about real stories, real people, real heroes. But are we going to talk about this Kevin Costner story? Because I haven't been able to talk about this anywhere yet. Oh, go on, go on then. So this okay, is perfect. Oprah, Kevin Costner, and Meghan and Harry at a Santa Barbara fundraiser. Whenever I hear Santa Barbara, I think of the terrible 80s soap opera. When I say <laughs> terrible, I obviously mean brilliant. Um, so this fundraiser, what is this? Yes, so this was for 1805 Live, which is a charity event that benefits firefighters. It was located at Kevin Costner's estate. Oprah was there. So was Ellen. So this is already Megan's crew. Um, I, I guess my commentary on this is they this is this should have been their plan three years ago. I would have much rather seen them in this position than sitting down with Oprah and gossiping about their family members. I think that this is a hail mary from Harry and Meghan to save their brand, to you know readjust and try to become this this um, philanthropy couple, this charity couple that they you know this life of service that they promised us when they left the royal family and then proceeded to go the gossip route for three years and then honestly i think that they have to schmooze they've got to get in with some of these people christo because it's the only way they're going to keep the invictus games afloat so they're trying to, they're there they're at this event and they're networking because their ultimate objective is that these people that are writing checks for kevin costner and his event are inevitably going to work with them on it i personally feel are inevitably going to work with them uh, on an Invictus Games, because if you look at who donates money to Invictus Games, a significant amount of money comes from the royal family. Comes well, they, from they Prince actually William. put up the money to found the Invictus Games, didn't they? Which is, and is, yeah, is, and and, it, and and William is still cutting checks to them. So if there is no um, if there is no end in sight in this, you know, family drama, you know, you've got to find money elsewhere. Um, but. I think it's interesting, obviously, because Kevin Costner had a relationship with Princess Diana. There was a friendship there. They talked about the bodyguard part, too. Uh, and he needs a distraction PR-wise because of that disastrous divorce he just, you know, finalized. 
Um, an unconfirmed, unconfirmed, but someone posted to Reddit that Costner tried to use the loo to shake Harry and Meghan backstage because they were glued to him. They were stuck to him like, you know, bubble gum on the bottom of your shoe. <laughs> so it was just like, get away from me, basically. <laughs> um, interesting um, that that's what they're doing. Um, I, I don't know. I, I wonder if their star power is enough to keep them in this philanthropic role because of course most of most people who are in these philanthropic roles have a day job you know the right. reason that you're interested in kevin costner's philanthropy is because he's an actor as well you yeah know, and, and, and and oprah winfrey huge chat show queen huge she's got her own television network and she does philanthropy whereas harry and megan uh, no one still quite knows what they do yeah, no, uh, and and what they have produced has been a you know professionally a failure. You've got Spotify saying you're grifters. Um, uh, you know the last Heart of Invictus was not deemed a Netflix success, and I you know I don't even think the uh, the success of Meet Me at the Lake will resurrect their brand at this point in time. Is this the the, the drama that they're doing? Yeah, so that, that we won't see for probably years, Christo, because of the strike. Good Lord. Honestly, I mean, it's quite a good life they've got, just like just milling about at parties, you know, turning up to stuff with millions in the bank. I mean, you know, they've got quite a nice life in Montessori. I don't know what they've got to complain about. Well, I think what they want, though, what they really desire is respect. Uh, a respect that they had when they were senior members of the royal family, but they lost with things like the near catastrophic car chase, which again was thrown back into the headlines when Prince William can jog through Central Park in the morning and not be accosted one time by a photographer. It just reminds you that look oh, come on that car chase they were involved there were that that went up to speeds of seven kilometers per hour <laughs> you know i just was... i imagine prince william jogging outside of the car like that's how <laughs> jogging fast they were past going. it waving yeah. as the paparazzi just aren't interested uh okay right. um let's talk about the fate of the queen's personal letters and diaries because this is an interesting story yeah, and this reminded me of a conversation I think we've had on one of our podcast episodes. Remember how we discussed Princess Diana's mother going through some of her old letters and, and diaries and burning it? Remember how we were kind of horrified by that? But then we were like, but that's what aristocrats do. Um, so the Mail on Sunday has discovered that the king has entrusted a loyal palisade by the name of Paul Wybrew, who is known as Tall Paul, to sort, which I knew like he was, it was like him and Paul. Paul Burrell. So he that's why he was tall, Paul, because uh, okay. Paul Burrell is Get it. Was tall. Um, but to sort through the Queen's private papers and diaries before they're transferred to the Royal Archive in Windsor, which is that beautiful sacred space where they keep all the goodies and all the historical documents. Um, historians are describing this decision as deeply concerning because they feel that vital historic documents may be suppressed or even destroyed without public knowledge. They argue that somebody that is not qualified might not fully grasp the historical significance of the material contained within these letters or diaries. So they might just think it's a, you know, they might just think it's a recipe or something and toss it. And, and in reality, somebody might be able to go, actually, that's code. That's code for this. Yeah. Or, or, you know, or actually that's quite a good recipe. <laughs> you know, yeah. The Queen's cookbook. I mean, that would be... I'd, I'd, I'd buy that. Um, no, you're right. I'd so, buy it over spare. Um, I'd buy it over spare. Oh, God, don't remind me of spare again. Honestly, the time I spent reading that for Vanessa's show. Um, I, I agree. Someone professional should go over that. Even if some of these Queen's... The, the Queen's... Um, late Queen's... Um, even if some of the letters are too personal, they can be locked away for a few years. They don't need to be made public. I mean, they're quite happy to do that with other uh, documents that are deemed to be too sensitive for public consumptions. There's no reason why some of these couldn't be. Yeah, I don't... I think that the, this is the king clearly being very protective. Um, but he's also a, such a history junkie that I, I think that... Ultimately, his objective is to make sure that she's protective, shown in a good light, and everybody that he loves is shown in a good light. 
but I also think that he respects the process enough and respects his family history that he wouldn't do anything to jeopardize it. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Listen, Kinsey, we'll do nothing to jeopardise you being here once again next week. The Queen of Royal News here on Talk TV. Thanks so much.